pass is well and truly king. Boy, five damage. 71. 90. 80. Wow. I blinked and I missed that. We just wiped out Singapore in a blink. Japan, the most OP cast nation in Hearts of Iron 4. Cheapest, most effective, most OP Mayos. Japan is the boyo that we're going to be playing today. And to give you a little bit of a teaser, check out these Mayos. Range focus Mayo. And look down here 15% range and agility bonus, 10% production bonus. And finally, what's this? Prioritize naval aircraft construction. A 20% discount for Cass. Cass today will be very very strong gather up the boys convert to basic infantry infrastructure don't usually do this but still it's a big deal for japan so we're going to go for that early pair it with some mills and to top it off the first thing you need to do is we need range improvements cast are way more effective when they've got extra fuel and they can fly longer distances 50 percent range yes exactly the rest you know how it goes fixing the government for japan no not today first thing we're going to do has got our range focus mayo army expansion law you knew the routine finish the old ships the ones are partially done and we have a single bomber which we can use to make carriers where is it carrier cast where's carrier cast into war carrier cast there we go and then we assign most of them into there we don't need support equipment need a little bit of artillery and we're not going to need any tanks for now keep things basic you know we're going to primarily focus on using our planes to make most of the pushes maybe a little bit more artillery yeah that looks about right merge up all the ships and disband all the planes every single one of them even ones on the carrier i don't usually do this because it's a big micro night way to reassign them but i don't care today anyway yeah sell 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 this is the meta by the way of uh making lots of money early game just sell off all your old planes most of them are old designs you're probably not even going to use anyway sell those all the old tanks sell them put the price on super cheap as well and why not sell a bunch of guns as well don't usually do this but i've got excess so you know why not right and convoys they always sell pretty good early games so 300 of those cheap price put them on the market and we'll have to micro this so auto accept let's go five speed let's go also we're importing oil from america let's not do that buy 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 which gives mile points which gives a boost to construction building that infrastructure nice and fast first thing we're going to do is we need to gain some air force points and to do that we're going to go for our ground support guy taking air xp there we go range improvements is done so let's make a proper plane now but this is what we start off with it's not great but it's okay to begin with so what we'll do is go for a more up-to-date plane and we need to do a carrier based airframe see right now look at the price difference and also carrier based airframe don't have as good stats so why am i doing this well it will make sense in the long run be patient biggest possible engine of course it's got to be a cast so the first slot has to be a bomb and the next one's going to be machine guns but then we need to stack loads and loads of range and to do that this is how we're going to do it range 1100 that is really impressive just need a little bit more air xp and then we're there this is looking pretty cluttered get rid there we go make these babies and we're gonna have to import a little bit of aluminium and a little bit of rubber because we are gonna need a few of these to begin with and we need to get the numbers up and there we go range focus we can go for this as quick as we can to gain as much xp as possible for the mayo to take advantage of those big juicy upgrades range focus and we got the mayo here so this is really awesome, but you need advanced machine tools. So we'll come back to this one. What I'm going to do is mark this as number one priority. And what that means is it'll check if this is available. And if it's not, it'll go into something else. That means that the minute we get the technology for this, it'll go for this one next. But in the meantime, we're going to focus on range. So range, range, more range, agility, range, air attack, ground attack, and all the others. Be aware this is a medium bomber so this won't apply and this is a transport plane so that won't apply either but i'll just put them on the queue anyway just to stack up as many my upgrades as possible this part of the focus tree is done now so let's focus on fixing our broken government which you know what for japan your actual government is actually decent so anyway historical path shine is next prioritize naval aircraft construction 20 percent reduction cost for carrier cast and you can see now the cost for a carrier airframe is 16.4 but the cost for a small airframe is 17 so we made it cheaper now we can produce them in high numbers with the maximum amount of range and maximum amount of destruction 
And that's exactly what we're going to do now. That's right. Cast. First cast. Exercise them. Let's go. Supply is a nightmare in China. So get your motorized sword and get one on trains as well. Trust me, it'll pay off in the long run. Infantry. Soft attack. Very important. Artillery. And then we can add on the support when we've got the XP. Exercise to level three. So they need to have a little bit of a bite to them, even though we're focusing mainly on cast. Okay, we'll split them to two armies. Yep, they are going to be overstacked to begin with until they get the right trait. For the time being, this will do just fine. Attack, attack. Focus on motorized priority. And I'll pop you guys here for now. Six months have passed. We can now go back into the rivalry between the Navy and the Army. And this one's a good one to go for because it uh, gives you four military factories. And we need a ridiculous amount of aluminium now to keep up with the production, which severely harms our economy, which might have to dial the down this a little bit when we start going to war, just to keep the economy going. What, you want free political power? Go for independent air force. I'm gonna stack that with tactical bombing expert for a 75% discount, practically free. And also an air combat training. Once again, 50 political power, practically free. And we could go for the carrier expert. But to be fair, the infantry expert is going to be better for what we're going to be doing to begin with. So, problem is sorted. Let's focus on going to war against China. More artillery. But this time, a little bit of support. Aluminium in these islands. 12 aluminium is not a lot, but you know what? We're making a lot of planes. So, aluminium is going to go a long way and then add the infrastructure as well. Trust me, it will be worth it. The Marco Polo bridge incident. Oh no, look at all these penalties. But let's just go to war with China. Centralized control will give additional range because it gives more air mission efficiency. The range on these planes is so good combined with the Mayo and the two extra extra fuel tanks. The range is actually pretty impressive. But trust me, you can never have too much range. So for now against China, which doesn't have much of an air force, this will go incredibly well. Occupation. Yep. I like armored cars. They're really decent for occupation. Not like tanks are slightly more effective, but for the short term, armored cars will do just fine. The Marco Polo bridge incident, we can declare war immediately on China. And to top it off, we are going to escalate the war immediately. So I believe every week you can press this button to escalate the more, war more. This will gain more war support and upset the USA. Now, if you want a completely flawless victory, you can actually declare war on China and completely defeat them without even upsetting America. In all fairness, though, with war support going up, if you don't declare war on the Philippines, it actually doesn't even matter. That's right. So more war support for America, they won't declare war on Japan anyway. Wouldn't it make more sense if, like, America got, like, 50, 60, 70 war support and could, could declare war on Japan instantly? Wouldn't that make more sense? I don't know, it doesn't, but regardless, anyway, if you don't declare war on the Philippines, it doesn't even matter. Anyway, ground, close air support. We immediately going to attack. They actually counterattack us immediately, surprisingly. We don't actually have any planning here, which is a bit of a mistake on my part, I will say. But the planning bonus here, and 41% attack, and off we go. And the damage we're doing is huge. Immediately pushing into them. They're holding out pretty decent to begin with because they've got the numbers. But you can see we are completely demolishing them in the air. Look at these numbers here. Damage to orc, damage to strength. And if you look in this northern air region, look at the amount of damage we're doing for Cass. It's absolutely huge. What doctrine are we doing? Of course, it's the middle path. Battlefield support gives a big bonus to close air support and agility. That's the one we need top it off you can also go for battlefield air interdiction which gives an extra bonus to ground attack but for now we'll focus on the range it's been a week you can escalate the war once again keep escalating you will be able to do more damage to china before they can fix their army corruption problem because right, they need army xp for that which is a lot more expensive we just have to press a button and spend a little bit of political power and as you can see here we're absolutely melting them and uh, they will reinforce, but they will take way more damage than we take. So overall, we will break them in the long run. And you can see there's a little bit of a break to the south here. So just keep pushing, go all the way to the south and start making some decent encirclements. The amount of cast damage we're doing is absolutely massive. If we push a little bit northwards here, we might be able to do an encirclement on Beijing. Mm, probably not. But the cast damage is definitely making up for it. Look at every tick of cast damage. We're hitting like 20, sometimes 25 amount of damage. The damage is absolutely huge and chinese can't do nothing about it they haven't got ground-based aa and they don't have any planes for their, themselves as well so right now they're in a mess and we completely routed them and we can bring over our other army we'll not bring the puppets into the war i don't think there's any need and just a front line there and off you go as well two armies bashing against the front line here the damage is going to be absolutely massive combined with the cast cast is well and truly king oh did i see a 50 damage there can you see that no 
Oh, come on. I'm going to get 50 damage. Come on. 45 damage. Micro in. What's that? I'm just going to hit them with Cass. Because that's the way forward. Cass is king. And right now, we don't have to import as much aluminium because we're getting it from the islands. And you can see here, now we're getting it mostly from our puppet nation, Manchuko. We can go for a little bit more if we go for the infrastructure. But is it worth four? No, probably not. My advice at this point is you want to think about encirclements and try and like lock them in to this eastern tip, this peninsula. And then focus on making little encirclements as you push forward. With the amount of cast damage you are actually doing, you're probably damaging the strength of these divisions pretty highly. So their ability to recover is going to be difficult. That's right. This strategy is not encirclement to win. This strategy is just not completely demolish the enemy in every way, shape and form. An infantry expert. Definitely an expert. There we go. And we've cut them out. So now you can just sweep across this area and grab all this land. But be aware of supply. It's pretty bad. You might have to capture this city to connect all the supply depots. And there we go. Supply is looking pretty good now. Once again, Cass is well is truly king. And we'll now assign it onto the army to let the AI micro that. Top it off, we can also train some more planes here. Exercise to level three. Get them prepared for the front line. And if they have maximum amount of XP, they could perform more effectively. Surprisingly, it doesn't let them do any more cast damage. It just gives them air attack and agility. Okay, it doesn't make much of a difference then. In that case... I just take the penalty, right? Yeah, I just take the penalty. Just attach them on now. Let's go. Look at the range. If you click on one of the Air Force here, you can actually see the range that they've got. Look at the size of this. It's massive. You can see they're going all the way from Taiwan all the way to the eastern China. That's pretty impressive. Stop it off. We can probably start working on better planes as well now because we've got a boost for the next model. We go for the next model with the range focus and I'll top that off as well. Mark this to auto upgrade when available. And why not start that with bigger bombs as well? Heavy bombs? Mm, we'll do that, but maybe another day. It's a little bit too far ahead for now. Americans demand apology. We do not apologize. We're Japanese. Encirclement. Once again, not based on raw firepower of the divisions, just based on the amount of air superiority. And our air superiority is king at the moment. Keep stacking it. More, more, more. Logistic wizard. You know you want it. Big reduction in supply makes a massive difference. It's like winning wars is just on autopilot. The amount of cast damage. I, oh, I saw 80 then for a second. 71! 90! 80! Once again, as you know is, you're probably thinking, what is Cass actually doing? If you look closely at a battle by clicking on one of them, you can see here the amount of damage being done in every single tick for a cast strike. In this case, this battle has had 14 damage hit to its organization, meaning its ability to fight, and also 8 damage to its strength, which is manpower and equipment. And if you keep striking them over and over again, eventually they both will break. And if they've got less stats, they can't fight. And to top that off as well, if they have less org, they're more likely to break quicker. And in this case, that's why I'm pushing through China here without any problems. And as you can see too, look at the strengths breaking on the division. It's not 100% anymore. Once again, the amount of stats that they can project with these divisions is going to be limited. At this point, because you're winning so heavily, look for the supply dupers and push for those locations because that way you can break the enemy even quicker because you'll have the supply on your end and they won't have theirs on their end. So they'll have to retreat back to the next supply depot. The slip becomes a slide. Love it when they have the ability to complete air doctrines is record times. And it feels really empowering. This is pretty good too. Supremacy will, an extra 10% attack. I don't mind if I do. War economy needs a boost. Stack some more mills. Try to balance our civilian production as well as our military production. A little bit of both. AI is all of a sudden like, hang on a minute. There's a gap in your front line. I think I'll take advantage of it. Not a problem. We still outgun you by 10 to 1. Oh, it's not a big deal. You're going to go here and go here. Extra army. And top it off, add a little bit of cast to that army as well. Ah, you thought you had me on the back foot, didn't you? Well, kind of you did, actually. I forgot about escorting the war. You always forget about that in Japan. Well, I do anyway. Okay, I think it's time to take a breath. Stop, boys. Cancel the front lines. And field marshal front line across the front. There we go. Get into position, boys. Build up your strength. Escalate the war once again. I think there's five escalations, and the final one is Ichigo which is kind of like a big boost to America's war support. And you know what? My advice is to actually go for it because war support for America doesn't make any difference to them declaring war on you. It's all about declaring war on the Philippines. And if you never declare war on the Philippines, it doesn't really make any difference then. So what's the point? Yeah, what is the point? Tell me what the point is. I don't know the point. Moments of downtime. What I advise you is just try and go for the supply depots. There's one here. And then there's one here. There's one here. Play them up. The ones on the front line are the best ones to go for. A new small airframe, improved airframe. Be aware, when you grade the chassis, it does actually increase the weight of the plane. It was 15 weight, now it's 16 weights. We're just, just at the right ratio. 
It's a shame we can't take advantage of the new modules. Oh, well, maybe another day. While we take a breath here, we push forward and grabbed all the close by supply depots. And then we can commence our next attack. And we're going to go a little bit steady this time more with a balanced approach. The amount of cast we're going to do, we'll be able to push forward and do some really good damage. To top that off as well, I'm going to go for battlefield air indiction as well now. Meaning our ground attack damage is going to be even higher. What, what was that? Doctrines? Oh, that's right. Air doctrines. Yeah, we've pretty much got all of them now. All the ones that make a difference to our uh, ground attack endeavors. Escalate the war again. Lads, a fan of armored cars. Switch out the ones for armored cars and see if you've got enough. Yep. And then again. Yep. And then again. Yep. I think we can probably get rid of all of them apart from one. We'll keep one just to keep the ratios a bit more balanced and not lose too many armored cars. There we go. Ikigo gives us a massive war, 10 war support for the United States. Does it really matter? Once again, if you don't declare on the Philippines, it doesn't actually matter. So there you go. You have the objective now to conquer China. If you don't do that within one year, you will suffer a penalty to war support and stability. Uh, to be fair, I don't know why you would not demolish China at this point. The amount of damage you do to them is pretty much huge. How many planes do we have down in the air? 3,000 pretty much. Yeah, it's not a problem anymore. Meanwhile... Land XP. We could do something about that. Grand battle plan. And it's always the right path. Always. And also, why don't you max out your air as well? Sure. I don't need the bonuses for that, but I'm going to do it anyway. And now we can go on aggressive because they are well and truly are beaten. The south and the center has been pushed. The north's holding out pretty well, though. South. Crushed. There's a gap in the front line, so go, go, go. Bypass the Philippines. That's right. If you don't declare on the Philippines, you don't declare war on America. It makes no sense. Surely they should be able to declare war in America at some point, right? I don't even apologize to them as well for the sinking of that civilian ship. I'm doing everything to antagonize America, but unless I declare war, they just don't care. America, why do you do these things? I think it's time for the big bombs. Hit hard, hit fast. Lots of cast, lots of damage. The most min maxy thing to do here would be build a collaboration government inside of China. So therefore you get loads of compliance, meaning gain the most amount of resources, less amount of resistance. However, I've done that a hundred times. So I want to do something different. Hence the reason why I'm going for the armored car thing. Yes, I don't always want to present min-max. So sometimes I just like to have fun. Please let me have fun. No, Dave, please. No fun for you today. You must min-max every single click. No, oh, please. On top of that, off, one of the most important upgrades you're going to have to go for is engines. Because engines let you put more modules on your planes. And without the bigger and more improved engines, you just can't improve your planes. So engines is probably the most crucial part. Even more crucial than the more advanced chassis. When it's 1914, you practically complete the Japanese focus tree. These are dark times, lads. When Chongqing refuses to fall, you have to go all the way around it to make it fall. If you want to prioritize cast in a certain region, my advice to you is stop the battle plan and just specifically aim for certain regions. You tend to find this is more effective because the cast will then all be focused on this one specific battle. And there you go. That is the end of them. So we're going to take all the territory, every single little bit. It is a little bit more min maxi to pop it, other parts of China to try and reduce resistance. But once again, I kind of enjoy today occupying all of them. Please let me have my fun. Demand Indochina from the French. And that means we're gonna no longer need rubber. Probably don't even need oil at this point. This is when the economy fully 100% starts to explode. Planes, move them all here and then merge them all up. Exercise to level three. We now have 3,300 casts. The cast swarm has arrived. And the cast range now is 1,430 kilometers. <laughs> That's insane. As we move forward, we're going to be finding the allies. They've got a lot better planes. They've got better stats, more air attack, more air defense. So we're going to need better stats too. But the only way we can get more stats onto this plane is if with a bigger engine. Otherwise, it won't be able to take off. And it's uh, kind of struggling to take off as it is right now. 16 of 16. Ouch. This is the part of the game where Japan focuses on resources. And there's a lot of resources to go around. And we need aluminium so badly. To top it off, when you're building the aluminium in these regions, you want to improve the infrastructure as well just to get the most of the aluminium in those regions. And then top it off as well. If you right click, it moves to that area and build here. Oh, it's already max infrastructure. That's fine. Build tall and we'll stop importing aluminium as well. Fully independent economy. Top it off. Can we get rid of the horses off the armored car? No. We're just lacking the amount of armored cars for that. Okay. So carriers. Remember, we made carrier based casts. So conveniently, two for one special, right? The air bases on the carriers. You can see there's four here. Oh, one, two, three, four. And that one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see where this is going, right? We're just filling them with planes. And at the same time, shift left click to exercise the planes while they're at sea, while they're all exercising. And now we've got the big engine. So now we can focus more on stats. And I think what we're probably going to do is 
Oh, we don't have the technology for it. Whoops. That was a mistake on my behalf. We need survivability studies. Develop Chinese resources, giving a huge amount of aluminium in certain regions, a plus the ability to prospect for more resources. The idea is you take out China and you've got to have a massive amount of resources for the war. It makes you wonder if Japan did take out China, which theoretically kind of would have been impossible, but if they did, what would of the Japanese war machine been like in Asia? Probably would have been a lot different, right? Now we make the real plane. Upgrade it with the range Mayo, giving even more range. That's insane. Then we add on the self-sealing. And then I think we try and double up on the machine guns, right? We could probably go for heavy machine guns. We should upgrade to that as well. And then we could start upgrading the old planes as well. Bigger machine guns. So now these planes not only have awesome range, but they also have some awesome stats too. And I realize my Mayo now is now level six. And we're going to make our planes quality based with agility. Yep, I'll make them cheaper. It's a hard choice. I think we'll go for the quality. Can you run out of manpower? Go for spiritual mobilization for another 2.5%. This is crucial. When you get a big new improvement to design of your plane, for instance, in this case, extra machine guns and self-sealing, upgrading is crucial. You want to focus on quality over quantity at this point. Now we have the heavy machine guns. Can we stack on the biggest of the biggest machine guns for the most air attack? Yes, we can. 25 for 25. This plane is, is perfect. Then we start upgrading. So I am, um, you're a speed bump. I know you did join me in the war, but no, not today. If you want to go hard on cast, this is how you go the hardest. The anti-tank cannon. It's time. Taiwan, no longer number one. Go, go, go. With such a wide front line, uh, you can just devour their entire army. Easy. No one ever wants to uh, help defend them. Allies? No. Oh, well, I'll take your ships as well. Don't forget about special forces. Uh, jungle special forces? Do you know what? In this one instance, that's actually a really great idea. Look at all the jungles here in Burma. And also jungles around here. This is the one instance this is actually really applicable. Let's add on some jungle-based pioneers. You know, I forgot this was even a thing. You have a research penalty for air. Once again, I never even knew this was a thing. One army on Malaysia. Other armies on the British Raj. And then, don't forget few divisions on Hong Kong because leaving one front line open that would have been a disaster so don't do that and we have one additional reserve army that we're going to deploy now here where you're gonna have to build naval bases around this region because supply here is absolutely dreadful top it off as well you want to build some air bases otherwise you're not going to have a range but then again the range of our aircraft is just massive look at the size of that range okay I don't think I'm going to have that problem we'll just build one then in that case just there Malaysia is my goal off you go. And I forgot to assign the ACAS. I'm going to put them on auto assign and see how our AI does. But they should all move to this region. 1,100 CAS have arrived to do more air crews. And we start bombing them. And the damage is quite light to begin with. One or two hits. Losing a few planes, not that many. Oh, they've arrived now. There we go. 2,000. And oh, we've run out of fuel. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. And move the fleet into port because we're exercising them. And then the Soviet Union, I need some, some of that Stalin communist fuel. And wow, wow. I blinked and I missed that. We just wiped out Singapore in a blink. And the same thing with the Raj too. We just completely mopped them out. I don't think they were prepared for this. Nope, I don't think they were prepared. Do we bother taking Indonesia or do we just double down on the Raj? I think we're going to double down on the Raj. Once again, this is just a speed bump. We're just completely annihilating them. Is it the air power that's doing this? No, this is just the raw division power. That's insane. Let's do the essentials. Uh, that's right. We're going to do war bonds, work conditions. Uh, more tungsten in North Korea? Sure. Now, we really love the ability to diversify our armed forces here so we can go down more special forces. I really would like the mountaineers to get the, the mountain attack, but it doesn't even look like we even need it because we've just plowed through Burma here like it was nothing. Once again, speed bump. The smallest of speed bumps. We have run out of convoys and we are selling some on the market. So in this case, we just cancel the order on the market. And then all the convoys come flooding back. Easy. Get Dhaka and Calcutta. And that's where most of the supply is located in Bangladesh and Eastern India. Grab that and you're done. And here comes the cast. The damage they're doing is insane. Oh, and we're even stripping them of their planes as well. This just shows not only is the range and the cast power high, but the amount of damage we can inflict is massive as well. What does it do? Well, just a little bit of everything. A little bit of hardness for mechanized. We'll go for that as well. We're going for a little bit of everything. There we go. We now have the anti-tank cannon, but unfortunately we do not have a plane. 
That was a big enough engine to actually launch with it. Otherwise, we'll sacrifice too many stats. And I don't want to do that because I'm a little bit nervous of the allies because their air force is pretty decent. I didn't think we'd do this well, though. This is actually blowing me away. And when you're winning and you just can't stop winning, you control B to get to the front line quick. So just so you can fill out the front line quickly. Right now, we have no opposition and we're just breaking the front immediately. Ignore that northern front. Trust me, we'll take care of that. And there goes the land doctrines as well. A bit of, bit of navy too? Sure. Bit of everything. All of the above goes the Raj. Once again, not microing here. Everyone asks me, where's the micro? I'm like, well, there is no micro. I kind of just autopilot on battle plan. Is this an effective way of playing? No, no, it's not. But once again, I'm having the most fun here. I'm having big fun. So uh, I'm enjoying this. Okay, corridor to Europe. Uh, going around Africa, that's going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, maybe I go in through the Middle East is probably the way forward. So let's do that. Of course, supply is going to be a problem. So sort that out now. Never mind, the wait was very short. And they joined the Allies. Perfect. That's what I wanted. This is the battles that the history books did not tell you about. The Japanese invasion of Iran to get through to Europe by going directly through Asia. These are the lessons you will not learn about in school. Iran's a little bit more difficult. You're going to push towards the supply depots and there's mass amounts of desert without supplies. So you're just going to push through where the supply is bad until you get where you need to be. And there goes Iran. I don't know how so many British divisions got inside of Iran. I guess they could have gone through the coast, I suppose. Okay, Iraq, you're next. Speed bump. Version 3 or 4. Damn, that was a breeze. Now to get through the middle of the desert, though. That's the hard part. Keep going. Push through the tiny little gap. This is probably the hardest bit, the mountains, and it splits off. Is there enough cast damage here? Oh, the cast numbers are nowhere near as high as they once were. We can fix that later on, because we're going to make the ultimate cast. Approximately 33 days. 32 days. 31 days. Oh, I wonder what's coming. No! The supply is bust. Do we have to go through Saudi Arabia? Yes. At the same time, build a few airports in Iraq. Turn Iraq into a massive airstrip. What? Are you America, Dave? Not today. All right. Saudis. Another speed bump. Speed bump version four. Five, six. Engine four is done. This is it. Okay. So we're going to replace the boring old crappy cast, which I could go for a heavy bomb lock, which would give me 6.6 .6 ground attack to 8.8 .8 ground attack. Those are our measly newbie numbers. We want to go for the anti-tank cannon. 16.5 ground attack. Wow. However, weight has now become a problem. And I think the solution here is doubling up on the engines. But then we're not going to go just for one cannon. No, we hopefully want to go for two cannons. And weight to thrust now is beautiful. Do we go for triple? Oh, baby, a triple. Oh, I hate to do this. I don't want to do this. You know, that's bad. That's actually a massive mistake on my bob. I don't think we should do that. That's, that is a big mistake. Without any actual air attack, it won't be able to defend itself in dogfighting. So I think this is the way forward. Okay, the Saudis have popped. And now we can turn around and focus on this front line and then push into Egypt. And then through North Africa. Then have access into Europe through the Med. I guess I'm going to need my Navy now. I grab the Suez, then the Navy comes into action. All right, we can stack 3,000 planes in Iraq now. The Iraq landing strip strategy. And then the amount of cast damage you can do should be eye-watering. Are they even contesting us? No, they're not. It makes me wonder, you know, if I just mass my most OP cast, will that be the way forward? Do you know what? I really want to do that. Yeah, let's do it. So let's start converting. Converting in mass. No doubt about it, this cast strategy is unbelievably OP. And uh, there is no train I can't break because the minute the cast starts striking and doing damage, I just demolish them. We are up against now some Spitfire, so they're going to be a worthy opponent. And breaking the Suez here is probably going to be quite tricky too. We managed to get enough cast strikes though. Yeah, we're going to break it. There we go. And we're over. Navy lads, let's go into the Mediterranean and combo raid everything in there. And they're in here. Combo raid. Off you go. Always engage. Split off if repaired. And once again, we have full control of the Mediterranean now. Egypt, done. Libya, done. Central Africa, work in progress. We're about to do the weirdest naval invasion ever here. We're going to drop a naval invasion and do a sea line into occupied Italy. I prefer, I've never done this before. This is a new one. Never mind. It's all owned by the Allies now. So this is not a wonky invasion at all. Part of the world you don't usually go to. The south is of South Africa. All right, naval invasion time. And the lads have arrived. When you land in multiple locations or naval invasion all in one go, it is so massive. There's like so much going on. It's like really hard for someone to defend against it just because there's like so many clicks that are required to kind of keep them all at bay. It's insane. 
Where is the invasion coming? Are we moving northwards or moving southwards? Two front war for the Allies, a problem the Allies don't usually have to deal with. But today they do. Then Italy has capitulated a second time. And I occupy most of Italy. However, it's still a puppet of Germany. Still led by Mussolini as well. Okay, access. Access for Germany. Access for Hungary. Romania. Ooh, the Argentinian fleet versus the Japanese fleet. Once again, this is the most historical game. And we are absolutely demolishing them. Ouch. Pushing through center of Africa. That's a good idea, said no one. Argentinian Navy gone. British Navy disabled. Cass, 3,000 strong. That's a lot of cast damage. And once again, they tried to do a naval invasion on top of my naval invasion. Ah, but my naval invasion was better than your naval invasion on the back of your naval invasion. Checkmate. I'm very happy to see the back end of Africa. Never again. Another one. And another one. There's not going to be a lot of planes left now. Okay, this is silly. I've been in this faction, so I'm disabled the faction. And then join the Axis. The Axis of Japan and Euro-Asia Afro, but not Oceania, because that's all allies. All right, you know where this eventually leads, don't you? That good old classic spot where you uh, invade the UK. New model of aircraft, then we can pop on an extra anti-tank gun, and look at that, just the right ratio of weight to thrust. The new reincarnation. And the best thing to do here is to take out a few planes. I instantly retreated from my own uh, POV here. Anyway, more planes. We almost got 10K planes. Exercise them, let's go. To this day, I never really fully understand why Pyrodrog can be done instantly with no preparation. Um, but a naval invasion, in this case, takes half a year. I have many questions, but not many answers. Trying to build airports across the entirety of northern lowlands and northern France to accommodate for my mass number of planes. Death stack navy, naval invasion support, naval invasion in 10 days. Let's go. America, 945, are you going to join the war? No, because I didn't declare war on the Philippines, so they never do. Okay, attach. Almost 10,000 casts to this army. Oh, this army's going to do so much damage now. And he lands and uh, immediately lands without any problems, even though I'm suffering from a 76% naval invasion penalty. <sighs> Once again, landed with complete ease. Bonus army. I'm going to send that in as well. I don't think I'm going to need to, but I'll send it in anyway. And once again, now we get to see the big show. This is what you've all turned up for, right? Just say yes. And here we go. 4K cast in south of England. And you can see the level of damage they're doing per strike. 16, 17, 15. Of course, these numbers are nowhere near as big as China because they've got some actual defense against me doing cast strikes. But overall here, the damage is absolutely huge for a modern army. And you can see the divisions absolutely melt. Look, they're all stacked up here. So that means I could just do it like a really easy encirclement and just push them all the way out. Oh my goodness, destruction. Are they going to get overrun? Are they going to get overrun? Oh, they get pushed to the very tip of the edge of England. And there you go, encircled. GG. At the same time, I'm just going to right click on the victory points and then right click into the north. And the speed on these divisions is absolutely insane. My contribution is 42%, 2% just, just more than Germany. Japan should take the islands. For some reason. Germany really wants New South Wales. Okay, I forfeit. Don't want the rest of Australia, but they desperately so much want that chunk from Australia. Fair enough, you can have it. There's me being a good boy trying to prevent border gore, and the AI is like, no, I demand border gore. I have become border gore, and that is what I want to become. Took most of Southeast Asia, apart from that chunk of Australia. I'm sorry, I tried. There's no doubt about it. Carrier Cass Japan is insane. You can make really cheap cast planes you can give them the adequate range they deserve and to top it off you can end the game with some absolutely insane ground attack 34.1 ground attack wow and you wondered about the division well, we ended up with something like this soft attack base mechanized for the hardness and nice decent speed with it as well could have gone a little bit faster if i got rid of the recon i got 11 kilometers per hour I suppose i could have gone for the motorized recon that would have been the smart choice i was juggling a lot okay be nice to me you got an itch for some more content? Well, give this one a click right there in the center. Give that one a click. Yes. See you soon. Bye-bye.